Hi guys, so uh, whilst building out the LDV, I was filming myself, little small clips, and what I was intending to do was to put all the clips together and make one long video of a complete van build. But unfortunately, halfway through, um, this little fella decided to crap itself, die on me, and I lost everything. But fortunately, some of the stuff that I did film went up to the cloud, which I've managed to salvage down from the cloud, like you do. Don't quite understand it, but I've got quite a lot of stuff back, and I've put that together to make this video. But unfortunately, like I say, it's not quite complete, but it's still quite a lot of stuff there. Some of it, some people might find useful. Um, so yeah, here we go. I hope you enjoy it. Inside the van, as you can see, it's pretty grim. I've got to try and get all this out. Um, this is probably going to be the hardest bit. These tie downs are look pretty industrial. And the floor, this is check plate and all the screws. Um, I'll clean these out, but most of them are full of stuff like this. And what I've done is to clean those screws out. I've got a small screwdriver like this, old screwdriver. Gouge out. I'm also going to get a short thing now. Clean out all the stuff from inside. Like that. And we trust the Emma. Will in now. And out they pop. So I've got about, um, I'd imagine, a few hundred of them to do. I'll let you know how I get on. So here I am on top of my van jet washing the roof. As you can see, it's very nice, it's a bit grim. But I thought I'd make a little video just to show you what it started off like. Let's hope it ends up better and I don't end up something broken. There you go, look at that. Good as new. Well, not quite a good name, because it's got some rust in it. Quite disappointed by that. Considering the underneath is totally rust free. It's a shame the roof has got rust in it. There you go. I'm sure I can sort that out once it's dried off. It's a lovely day. A little bit overcast. Perfect for cleaning the roof of a van. Hello, um, this is day one of the van build. I've already stripped all the panels out, cleaned it. Um, I didn't do a video of me cleaning and stripping panels out. Uh, I didn't think that'd be very interesting. You know, I know you don't want to see me do that. The bulkhead at the back is all loose. It's just one screw holding it there. And I've left that one screw in and the bulkhead for now just to give me a bit of privacy because I'm I'm near a wood you can't really see but if you look through the crack you can see the trees there there's a woodland behind me I get a lot of dog walkers walking past and they all seem to stop and go oh what are you doing you're building a camper I'm like yeah and then they'll be like oh when I was young we used to go camping with my dad and my mum and, and then before you know it, you've lost an hour so I'm not being rude or ain't sociable or anything like that I just want to get on and get it done as soon as I can so yeah the bulkhead's staying there for now a bit of privacy and at the end of the day it's all about stealth so I'm a stealthy camper and a stealthy camper builder yeah, so there you go it's took me about a couple of hours I suppose so far and my garage is absolutely full to the roof with stuff that I bought off the internet. I spent fortune, but I'll go into that more later. So like I say, today I've stripped it out and these are how many screws I took out. Quite a few. So I do recommend, if anyone's doing this, or think they're doing this, get yourselves one of these. These come from B&Q. 
it's actually a hammer um it's meant for undoing wheel nuts lots of mechanics see, he's got an adapter on it. so there you go look at that it's actually designed for undoing rusty nuts and bolts and stuff but with this adapter it makes quick work of any rusty screws and also with that adapter I can use it as a drill and that's the only thing I use and I think that was about 100 quid out of b and as you can see I've had it a little while there you go. I'll hold that there for a little while so you can see it yeah I can't even read it now McAllister hammer wrench I think it's called there you go look at the state of it you can see I've had it a few years I'll tell you what it's got it's had some use I've undone all sorts of stuff with that yeah and that is all I use that's my power screwdriver drill and I can put sockets on it and I use it for undoing rusty nuts and bolts as well brilliant bit of kit all for under quid there you go and no there's no link below because I'm not interested in all that so uh, next job wash the sides spray some glue um, start insulating I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do the sides first and the roof and the floor last because if I do the floor first it's not like a house if you do the floor first it's gonna get ruined so there's a tip do the floor last Back on. So now the van is clean, stripped out, get some sandpaper, any old sandpaper will do, as long as it's rough, and then just start by just screwing up the panels, because I'm going to spray glue on there, uh, contact adhesive, so a layer of contact adhesive, then a layer of contact adhesive on your insulation, stick it together. And it's just this is just so that it makes sure it sticks okay I'm not going to video obviously me doing it because that'd be just so boring so here's a little tip anyone thinking of using this tongue and groove cladding I should get one of these miter saws they're really cheap like 30 quid probably cheaper than that this one I've had for years you can see it's even going rusty and they cut an absolute perfect straight edge every time. So yeah, a little tip there. I mean, it's so easy to use. Oh, this is day four of five. Um, no, four point five, I should say. Or four and a half. I've skipped a day, I know. I've been busy, as you can see. I've put all this cladding on this side and the bulkhead's gone adios amigos hello dog walkers this is the, uh, the vapor barrier that I use it's just polythene as I said before and that stops any moisture getting into the insulation put some little lights in the ceiling this wire is from the big light and this wire is for the fan that's in the going to be in the skylight I've done the normal trick I've built a frame a wooden square frame for the skylight and I attach that to the ceiling or roof um, and I use that as a guide for my cladding so the cladding goes all the way around it's a really simple way to do it and once the cladding is finished and I'm ready to fit the skylight on a beautiful daylight today I drill four holes in each corner I've done them already to show you so each corner with a hole drilled right through to the roof and I use that as a guide and then once I get on top of the roof mark out with a marker pen using those four holes as a, say as a reference point and then simply cut from up the top down and the blade hopefully will follow this timber and the reason that wire isn't through that hole because if I was to poke that through the blade is just going to cut it so yeah, and once it's once the hole's cut, then I'll put the wire through, fit the skylight, wire up the fan, jobs are good. And here's one I did earlier. 
So this van's gonna have two of those. One sucking, one blowing. Plenty of ventilation, because there's no windows. Stealth, that's what it's all about. So there you go, I'll, um, I'll crack on and do another video in a minute. So it's the end of day 4.5. The wall is done. The cladding's all finished. It's fully insulated. My ceiling fan's fitted. My lights are fitted. All I've got to do now is fit the other skylight tomorrow and put a solar panel on the roof. Finish off the cladding on that door, the sliding door. Then I can start making my furniture. That's when the fun part starts. So I'll keep you posted. So I've started cutting a hole in the roof. As you can see, as I mentioned earlier, there's four pilot holes, one in each corner. And I've used those to mark out where I've got a cut. Well, this hole, obviously, I've made it bigger so the blade fits through. And because I've put a frame underneath as a guide, I'll show you. Got this old rubber mat is just to protect the paintwork of the van. And inside the van, you can see the blade sticking through the roof. Hopefully it should stay that side of the frame. It's quite a simple way of making sure everything lines up. There you go. And I've done this a couple of times, so I know it works. So here's a little tip. If you've got a roof with these ribs, Try and cut along these first, each side. Cut those first, and then the flat ones. The reason for cutting these first is because as you get to these ribs, it will vibrate. Goes up and down, up and down. And uh, it's a lot better if you leave these till last, the flat surfaces. Do get a lot of movement otherwise, and it can break your blades. So here we go. So cut along where the ribs are first, along this line and this line, and then save these nice straight edges for last. And by doing that, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble and a lot of blades. So as soon as I cut a hole in the roof. It started to rain, which is a shame because I wanted to show you how I seal the skylight to the roof. To make sure it's, it's quite simple, I use this stuff, it's called mastic tape. It never goes hard, it kind of stays sticky all the time. So what I do, I put the skylight in the hole, I draw around it and stick the mastic tape to the roof and then put the skylight in place and it seals it, bolt it from underneath. Yeah, I wanted to show you, but good old British weather, no sooner as I cut a hole in the roof, it started to rain. So there you go, anyway, that's how it looks. Now yeah, it's all installed. Alright, so I've reached the stage, I've reached the stage now of insulating the floor. As you can see, I'm using polystyrene. This stuff is quite messy when you cut it, especially when all you've got is a knife like this. So I've come to Wix's, I've just brought it out of Wix, it's seven quid a sheet. I snapped it coming across the car park. I've parked at the end of the car park as far away from it as I possibly can. So I'm actually going to cut it to size and uh, what's left over can go in there skip. And also it saves making a mess outside mine. Just show you. This is uh, where I am now. Actually, there you go. All right, side wixes. And there's my stealth camper, stealthily fitting the floor. There you are. At least I know I've got enough of it. And if I haven't, I can go and pop back and get some more. But I think three sheets will be enough. So there you go. That's the floor going down. 
Um, yeah, I've varnished the top. That's all been done with yacht varnish, so it's nice and sealed. Stop all the steam getting in. That's my progress so far. So the floor is laid. My polystyrene is down. Just in time for it to start raining. I've got a little bit left over there. So I'm going to go and find a skip before I get completely drenched. There is some nice chunky bits left. A couple of them, which I'll save to insulate the bottom of this. I'll go in the bottom of there and that'll stop the heat in the cab in the summer from transferring up to whatever's in there. Yeah, so it's worked out quite well. Three sheets. Three sheets in total. Um, seven quid a sheet, so really cheap. I'm pleased with that. All right, I'm off to find a skip. So, day six. Um, I didn't have yesterday off. I ended up working half a day anyway. I painted the floor, painted the sides, a bit of primer. Just get it ready for the framework. And I've started putting the framework in. Rather than try and explain how I'm going to do it, I'll just do it and then show you what I do. So basically, this is the frame for the bed. Just three up, three straight uprights across there, and then on top of that will go plywood, and then my slats for the bed. I've also done a bit of rough framework here for the bulkhead. This is where my bulkhead's going to go. All the wires I come down this channel through a hole here, and then my control panel will go there, and it'll be sandwiched between plywood. Not that bit. That's a bit too small. I mean, there's my control panel, all wired up, ready to go. That will go there, along with my solar controller. So I'll end up with all my switches there, my solar controller there, and my work surface will come along here, hopefully. I've got my fridge there, got my sink. I just kind of lay it all out so I can visualise how it's going to look and how it's all going to space out. I find it easier to do that, to just put everything in the van, lay it out, and then you can physically see where it's going to fit. It's just a lot easier than, well I find it easier, than putting it on pen and paper and trying to draw it all out. You can actually get a feel of how it's all going to fit together by doing that. So yeah, next I'm going to make a framework across there. And in front of the bed, where this bed is, this bed frame, I like to put a little bench there and a cubby hole behind it so I'll, I'll do the framework for the rest of that and then work out how much plywood I need to buy. Yes, yeah, so that's it really, it's day six. So I've had a very productive day today. I've managed to get all the framing done, all the framework, all the bare bones. This is where my worktop's going to be eventually. And my control panel is going to be here. My switches, solar controller, the frame for the bed is there, so the bed's going to be there, and then below that, a frame for the step and the bench, and then beyond that again is the framework. Let's come over a bit. See that? That's where the that's going to be the inside of the cupboard there. That's pretty much all the frame done. So the next stage will be getting some plywood and sectioning it off, putting in the sections for the underneath the bed where the cupboard is. It's always a good idea to put all your backboard and everything before you actually put the bed on. Just makes it a little bit simpler. Right there, one more look. There you go. So there you go. That's all the frames done. So my box work is almost done. Before I seal it all in, I thought I'd show you how it works. I actually brought two sheets of ply, um, four by eight, and I pretty much used all of it to do this boxing in. Yeah, it takes a lot of wood. So there's a back bulkhead, a false floor, 
I like this. This is my false floor. I can hide everything in there. All my valuables get hidden in there. It's my little secret hidey hole. Actually, it's not a secret anymore, is it? Hmm. Anyway, that's what it is, what it is. The doors go there. These doors are going to go here. There's going to be plastic containers in there. And then this false floor. Yeah, it's a good place to stash all your valuables. Um, like I was saying, it's always a good idea to do this box work before you put your bed on. Because then, all these little screws, all your nooks and crannies are easy to get to before you go boxing it in. Because once you fit all this and it's screwed down, I'll show you. Like that. That all fits in there like that. You see, once that's fitted, you've got to crawl underneath with all your screws and drilling and stuff so it's better to do it before you do that before you put your bed base down yeah so there you go that's so far so far so good so there we go all done all the box work is finished literally all i've got left are those two big sheets is this 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 and this that's it, that's all I've got left, out of two huge sheets, like they were like four by eight. And when I put them in the van, they took up the whole of this van, these two huge sheets. And yeah, that's all I've got left. Pretty cool. So here's a little handy hint. I don't normally do tips and hints, because there's a lot of them out there. I thought I'd just share this with you. How to get this straight edge. The same angle as your wall. So slide your panel in place. Well, this is what I do anyway. Slide it in place, get an off cut. This has got to be thicker than the gap here. So if you put it against the wall, like that. Look. Oh, like that. And then Voila, you've got the angle. Simple, bit of scrap wood. I say. Now this is obviously miles too long. So, once I've cut this off here, I then put it back where it's got to go and simply mark the back where it needs to be cut. So, like imagine that's been cut, this all trimmed. I would then just run a pencil up the back of there like that. And then trim it off. Here's your line, that's where to cut. And that will fit absolutely perfect. And I'll demonstrate. So once I've cut the edges, I'll then use one of these files. It's just a wood file. Just to take the rough edges off. Round them off a little bit, and that should fit perfectly in there. There you go, do it does. I always cut as well on that line, cut this side of the line so you get a little tiny bit of an overhang. And then later on, once it's all panelled up, there's only one more to go, I'll then file it, file it down to make sure it's all nice and flush. Go. One more to do. So once again, well these are just off cuts from when I did all the panelling. Obviously make sure it's the right way because they do have a side. That's the back side. You can tell because the edge is square. Now on the front side it's got a nice tapered smooth finish. So that fits there. Get me off cut, put it up against the wall, knock it again, like that. cut that off. 
So there we are, there's my fridge slider. It's just a basic big drawer. Fridge slides in and out from underneath the cabinet. And all I've got to do now is put a face here on the front of it. As you can see it slides in like that into its little space. And then out again like that. And just a matter of interest, this part here, I've put these little plugs in there like that. There's a couple of those in there just to support that. And it's all held together with just one screw at the back. One screw, bit of glue, and a couple of dowels. Yeah, very simple to use. Eight mil dowels, eight mil drill bit. Job done. That's how my fridge is going to slide in and out, and that's how I built it. There you go. Quite simple, neat. Eventually, there'll be a countertop on there and a facier panel across there. All done. So I just want to share this with you. Um, my gas dropout, as we know, propane and butane are heavier than air, so if you do get a leak. Uh, the, the gas will drop to the floor and it's always a good idea where your tanks are to make a hole in your floor so that if you are unfortunate enough to have a gas leak it drops out it doesn't accumulate in your van and for this job i use a simple uh, sink plug hole obviously i don't put the plug in so i'll drill a hole in the floor that goes in the hole All right. And it's got a nice rubber seal around it that screws up from underneath and there you go nice and simple well you'd think it was simple except this van is an ldv maxis and i'll tell you what the floor of these things are built like a tank my hole saw was brand new this was brand new out of the box look at it it's absolutely destroyed it knocked all the teeth out broke the drill bit in the middle that was one tough hole to saw. Any other van I've had, these things go straight through like butter, no problem. But this LDV Maxxis, the metal they use in the floor, honestly, it's like a tank. I can see why there's no rust underneath now. But there you go. So if you've got an LDV Maxxis and you'll think the drilling holes in the floor, take it easy, go slow. Because that's what's going to happen if you don't. Look at that. That was one tough floor to drill hole through. There you go, just wanted to share that. So there you go. I hope somebody finds that useful. And um, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not all complete. It's not all there, not to the end anyway. But I've done a van tour, so you can see what it looks like at the end. Uh, now I've got some new equipment. The next van build, hopefully, I'll manage to film it all the way through. So if you want to see the next one, um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification, and I'll see you on the next build.